Today, I want to show you how to make a tea towel that you can personalize for the seasons, for the colors the person that you want to gift it to likes, for whatever you want to put on it. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and today I want to show you how to make this tea towel project. It's really simple to make, and it's kind of fun too because you have some choices you can make along the way. So what do you need to do this? Well, you need a tea towel, but let me first show you some of the ones I've already made. So here's one I've made for Halloween. So I have different seasonal ones that I've made that I love to put out in my kitchen for the different seasons. So I have some for Halloween, and I have some for this is just one of the fabrics I've used for a Christmas one. I also have ones for Easter. Um, let me think, what else do I have? Hmm, New Year's. I need to find some New Year's fabric and make one of these. But today, that's not what I'm making. I am going to use some fun tea pot, tea cup fabric that I really think is cute. And I'm going to make a tea towel with that. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And the nice thing about this project, as I said, is you can personalize it. So they make great gifts. They're practical. I love gifts that are fun and practical and personalized. Okay. So what are you going to need? Well, you need a tea towel, of course. So I actually bought some tea toweling fabric. You could buy a tea towel that's already made if you wanted to. But if you don't and you don't have uh, one that you've bought like that and you want to use just the regular kind of tea towel, it's kind of linen-y, cotton linen linen blend, I believe, fabric, then what you want to do is you want to take your edges and hem them first, okay? So what I did is I just folded the hem under about a quarter of an inch, another quarter of an inch, and then just top stitched along the bottoms and the sides. So then I have my tea towel that's all finished, but it looks pretty boring, doesn't it? So this is where the fun comes in. You want to add some fabric. And I got to say, this is a project that is perfect for those seasonal fabrics, those novelty prints you picked up because they're so cute, but you don't know what to do with them. Okay, is it just me? Really, is it just me that does that? I got a ton of these kind of fabrics. And this is a great project to use them in. And as I said, it's pretty simple, quick to make, but you can have some fun with it. So you need to have some fabric to put on it. And how much fabric do you need? Well. Again, this is a bit of a personal choice, but what I like to do is I like to have a piece of fabric that goes across my tea towel, and you probably won't be able to see it quite all the way along here, but I'm going to pull out my measuring tape. And what I did is I measured from where I top stitched that tea towel all the way over to the other side, which gives me about 16, a little over 16 inches, 16 and a half. So then what I like to do is I like to take my fabric and cut it to be that size plus an inch. So in my case, 16 and a half plus an inch is 17 and a half. So that's going to be my fabric width. As far as, or length, I don't know which way you want to say it. Um, I'm saying width, okay? And I'm saying height for this, okay? So the height I've used is I cut a six inch piece of fabric. And the reason we're doing these calculations, adding an inch and that type of thing, is because we're going to be folding in the edges uh, a a half an inch. I was going to say a quarter. So used to saying a quarter when we're quilting, right? But a half inch. Okay. So that was the next thing I did. I cut my fabric to the appropriate size. And if you don't want this much fabric, if you want something thinner, you can do that. And I think this one, yeah, I was going to say this one, as you can see, is even uh, wider. So whatever you think looks appropriate for the length of your tea towel too, because they come in different lengths. So I found this was a pretty good size to use. So after I cut it, I folded all the edges in a half an inch all the way around. Okay. And then I just like I did the length, the longest ones first. Okay. These ones here first, folded them over and just pressed them. And then I did the edges as it were. And then I'm going to put them on my tea towel and I'm going to be able to line them up along the, you know, where that stitching was, right? Now, here's where another choice comes in. How far up from the bottom of the tea towel do you want it, okay? I put mine in, I, I like to eyeball things all the time. You know, I put them down, I go, that doesn't look right, and I move things around until I go, oh, that looks good, right? So you want to move that along there. I think it's about an inch and a half up. That's typically what I do. And if you want to run a reference line with an erasable pen or pencil, you could do that to line up your fabric. And then you can just put your fabric down. Now, you can either pin your fabric to keep it in place. You could use some glue on it to keep it in place, whatever, but you need to keep it in place, okay? So however you find that works best for you, I would suggest you do that to keep it down there because now that it's down, 
you need to keep it down there permanently, okay? The glue isn't going to cut it <laughs> when you go to wash it. So you need to use some stitches. And this is also a fun part because you can use the decorative stitches on your sewing machine, right? This is a perfect project to do this. And I'm just going to go back here again. Now, I did these with an older sewing machine that I no longer use, actually. But let me just pull this out and show you the stitches here that I've used. Okay, so this is the stitch I used. Fairly wide stitch. This was quite a wide piece of fabric, and it's a big print, too. So that balanced it off nicely. This one here, where it was a little bit less as far as the width of the fabric on here, I used a, just a small zigzag stitch that you can see here. And actually, this is variegated thread. So you can probably see how this is lighter and then going down to the darker orange. So that was kind of fun, too. So you can have fun with your threads. So let's talk about the threads before we get into the decorative stitches. Okay, so do you want your thread to show or not? And that's going to be something you consider when you talk about or when you choose, I should say, your decorative stitch as well. Do you want the stitch to show? How much do you want it to show? How elaborate are you going to get with those stitches? But let's talk about thread choices. So you can have thread that is thin. So you're not going to see very much of it, okay? And if you were doing a really intricate stitch, that might be a good choice. A couple of the ones I have here, I have Micro Quilter from Superior Threads, and I have Invisifil from Wonderfill. So you could get those and use those. And as you can see, that thread is very, very thin. Like you can't really even see it on here. So if you use it on the edge, you're not going to see that stitch an awful lot. And I've picked these colors out. These are just kind of off whites. I could have used a, a more white one. I'll show you one like that in just a second. Because the other thing you need to think about, not just your thread weight, but what colors do you want to use? Do you want that, again, do you want that stitching to blend in or stand out? We talked about having a white thread that I was going to show you. This is Accent from Wonderfill. It is a 12 weight thread. So you can see that thread, right? You can see that. And when you use it, you will see it on your tea towel. Okay, so that is a heavier weight thread. It's like I've gone from the super light to <laughs> super thick, heavy thread. So you definitely would see this. And again, if you were doing a really dense decorative stitch, this is probably not a good choice, okay? Because it's just gonna be too much on there. It's gonna pull in your tea towel fabric too much. Okay, and it would be one that you probably need to use some stabilizer behind it. We don't want to get into all that if we don't have to, right? Now, what about this one? This is Poly Neon from Madeira. This is a 40 weight polyester thread. There's a nice blue that would match very well. You'll see the stitch, but it's going to blend in really nicely, right? So you have different weights of thread you can think about, different colors you can think about, and then you get to play with your stitches. But whatever you choose, you need to practice it first. Don't just start on your good tea towel, as it were, because you may find that your tension's off. You may find that you don't like the look of it. Okay, so I always like to do a practice stitch first. So I'm just going to grab some other fabric here. Let me move my tea towel, my good tea towel, out of the way. So I just have some white fabric here, and I've got it doubled. Okay, I'm going to keep it double. So it's going to replicate the tea towel with the fabric on top of it to some degree anyway. And what I'm trying to avoid, as I said, is I'm trying to avoid having to put stabilizer uh, behind that tea towel if I can. So that will depend on the density of the stitches that I use, right? Now, another uh, color of thread that I could use that I didn't show you was red, because there's red in that fabric. And of course, the red's really going to stand out. And I'm going to show you some stitches with the red so you can get an idea of what it might look like on the tea towel. And I'll show you how I um, audition that too on the tea towel in just a sec. But the first thing I need to do is pull up my bobbin thread here. Okay, and I need to choose a stitch. So you can go from something really, really simple. You can even use some utility stitches. They are kind of interesting, but you can go with a really simple, um, try to look at one here just a second zigzag stitch and I'm going with a zigzag stitch. I want to make this a little bit wider so you can see it and probably a little bit longer as well. So I'm just adjusting some settings on my machine and I'm using just a regular zigzag stitch. Okay break my thread there. Okay, so there's a zigzag stitch. Now you can see even with that zigzag, we're getting a little bit of tunneling 
there. I don't think that's going to happen on the tea towel. I'm pretty sure it won't, but it could just be on the type of fabric I'm using here. So there's your zigzag. And if I want to audition this on the tea towel, I don't actually need the tea towel. I just need the fabric that I'm going to be stitching on. And I can just lay it out like this and you get a bit of an idea of what that would look like. Okay. So this is a good way to see, is my stitch too wide? Is it too narrow? You know, should it be wider, narrower, higher, not as, not as high, you know, narrower, that direction. And what about the color? Do I like the color on that or not? Do I want to see that on that tea towel? So that's what you're going to do here. You're going to do some practice stitching first and see what you think you want to use because it's much easier to practice here and not have to tear out stitches than it is to put it on the tea towel and decide you don't like it. Ask me how I know. Okay, so let me go into something else here. I want to go into, there was one here that actually had teacups on it. I think it's in, yes, it's in the lifestyle area. Okay, so this is one, and this is just the default. So this is as wide as this stitch would go at nine millimeters. It's 2.5 as far as the length. And let's see what this looks like. And one of the things to watch when you're doing these decorative stitches is to see where they start forming. So if you look at that, this stitch here that I'm working with, it starts from the middle of the foot or in the middle of the stitch, if you will. And then it's gonna go up and down or down and up, <laughs> down and up. Okay, we're gonna cut that. Okay, so here's this one now. That is that is quite cute, right? And really appropriate for the fabric, right? I mean, those little teacups, but, and you're not gonna see them because of how I, you know, I'm putting them on here, but you can have them if do you want them all on here, okay? Because remember, they form in the center there. So if I line this up to stitch and I line it up like this, for example, I'm gonna get the cups on the tea towel and the saucers on the fabric and that might not be what I want. So part of the reason you want to practice this is to see where does that stitch form and how will I then need to line it up on my fabric to get the result I want, okay? Let's try one more here. I'm gonna try something else that's, um, well, not that I would use this, but I just wanna show you <laughs> what happens if you do a denser stitch, okay? See what you think of this one. Okay, so <laughs> those are very cute. And that would be really appropriate on the Halloween one, right? But I don't think I'd put that on the detail. But it's quite, it's quite dense. Okay, you can see that stitching on the back too, how dense it is. I'm surprised it didn't pucker up my fabric all that much, maybe because it's fairly fine. But that's a cute stitch. But a couple things. First off, like I said, if you're using, if this is a bigger stitch, like let's say it was a wider satin stitch, it's going to really gather that fabric up. So you're going to have to have some tear away or wash away stabilizer on the back when you're using that stitch. The other thing is that when you are working with this type of a design, a dense design, it takes a lot longer. <laughs> okay, so that's something else. If you want to make a whole bunch of tea towels as gifts, you know, you probably want to stitch, you know, like even that zigzag, that works along fairly quickly, okay? So you don't want to be spending, you know, an hour just to do one tea towel just with the decorative stitching. So that's something else to keep in mind as well. So I don't think I'll use the bats, although they're very cute, aren't they? They are quite cute. So let's go back again here. So there's, you know, on this machine, there's all kinds of stitches, animals and, you know, decorative uh, traditional stitches, that type of thing, quilt type stitches. You know, you can get a blanket stitch if you want to do something very traditional, just a blanket stitch. But let's go into something that's interesting, but not super um, detailed, dense. And there's always, there's one I like to use. Let's see here, if I go to this guy. This guy, this is uh, Decorative Stitch 25 on the Janome CM17. And by the way, I should tell you, when you're doing decorative stitches, you need to make sure that you've got your zigzag or regular needle plate in, right? Because your needle's moving all over the place. And I'm using an F2 foot here, like an applique foot. 
um, an open applique foot so you can see what's happening. So I'm going to go into this particular design here, but I don't like it quite as wide as what the default is. So I'm just going to take it down a little bit here. I forget what I take it down to, but the nice thing is when you make these adjustments on the machine, it will show you what it looks like. Okay, let's try that. So I've changed this to 5.5 for the width and 2 for the length. Let's see how this goes. Alright, so there's a nice little stitch there. I need to adjust my tension, I can see on that one, because I've got a white bobbin thread, so I can see it's pulling up the bobbin thread, so I need to loosen the tension a little bit on that, so I'm glad I practiced it here first. But it's kind of cute, and just a simple little stitch to go on, and I would have that all the way on, but you know, it would be cute with this, this as well. So, lots of different choices that you can use when you are making these tea towels, so it's kind of fun. It gives you a chance to use some different uh, design stitches I should say, decorative stitches you may not have tried before. It gives you a chance to try different color threads you may not have tried before because it's not very often I use red as uh, my quilting thread when I'm free motion quilting my designs, but it would work really well on this particular project. So if you are looking for some gifts that are quick to stitch up and that you can really personalize for the recipient, try the tea towels because they don't take long to make. You can have fun using some of those novelty prints you may have in your stash that you've always wondered what to do with. Before you go today, I just want to point out the icon below my video, which is a heart and a dollar sign in it, and that is your opportunity to support the Chatterbox Quilts channel. By giving as little as $2, you can help me buy the notions and fabrics that I use in these videos that I create for you. So if you wish to donate, I would be very thankful for that. Thank you. Now, you may want more information about decorative stitches and how to use them in your projects. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Check out this video I've added just for you. For more helpful quilting information, be sure to go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.